Amanda, you're back with us. Thanks very much for joining us again. We have a whole pile of questions. I think we have three questions to get through today, do we? We have three questions again today, yep. Okay, why don't we just jump in for the first one? Yep. So I am currently saving up for the deposit to purchase my first home. I'm on, I suppose, a current base salary that I'm really happy with. It will cover all my expenses for the month and then will also allow me to put the same proportion of money away each month and of course to go towards that deposit. In my current role, I can receive company bonuses, um, but it is totally performance related and can fluctuate depending on kind of that period of time. So I'm a little bit lost when it comes to knowing how much of the bonus to save. Do I save the entire thing? Do I save a certain proportion? Is there a rule of thumb? So any advice would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. What's the crux of the question there, Amanda, do you think? So it's really to do with how best to budget when you part of your salary is based on a company bonus. Okay. So the first thing I'd say about this person is they seem to be really on top of their Mm, day-to-day kind of, this is my regular income. This is my regular pattern. This is what I do. That's great. Okay. When it comes to bonuses, it's actually... Um, it needs to be treated completely differently, right? A bonus is a bonus. It's Mm -hmm. an extra. It's something that you should never expect and more importantly, you should never rely on. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, is that when the bonus comes in, you should not have to use it to put bread and milk on the table, Mm -hmm. okay? It should be for bigger stuff, for medium, long-term stuff, short-term, medium and long-term stuff and get it put away and never get used to it. People can often get caught up with this with bonuses, but they can also get caught up with it with where you're getting shares and work yeah. and then they vest after three years. Oh yeah, I always pay for my holiday after three years. Mm-hmm. Um, I pay for my big, my holiday every year comes from the shares that I got, bought three years ago and now I have them here today and I use them and it performs part of life. Then the share price gets hit and it's gone or the bonus doesn't come in and it's gone and you've no yeah. bread and milk on the table. Okay, so what this person needs to do is, is I would say with a bonus, it's a little bit like some sometimes the advice you give to a kid when they get their communion money or their confirmation money or they get a lump of cash because their uncle likes them or something, yeah. right? Um, you need to give yourself a little bit of pleasure. Well done. The company has yeah. performed or you've performed and you've got this bonus. And it's different for everyone depending on what stage of life you're at. And as soon as I start coming out with percentages, people will start being, oh, that's exactly how you do it. No, it's different for everyone before I give the percentages. But just imagine you say, a third of it, I'm going to blow it. I'm going to spend yeah. it on it, whatever I want. A third of it I'm putting it away for medium term and a per- third of it I'm putting away for long term. And they are not the percentages. I'm just saying that you divide it up into different pots and you say, right, mm. this is what I'm going to do with my bonus because the last thing I'm going to do with my bonus or vested shares is to get used to having it in my wages and yeah. become reliant on it. Yeah. Have I missed anything there? That makes sense? No, no, no. I think, and, and this lady seemed to have her her day-to-day covered, yes. which is a great position to be in. So, yeah, it's about enjoying life, but also saving, Longer saving term. some for yeah. the future too. Exactly. Let's go for question two. Hey, Owen, just hoping you can give us some advice on managing day to day and month to month. And we always start off with great intentions and send money to the credit union for saving, allocate money for the mortgage, childcare, groceries, etc. But we always seem to underestimate what we might need and then we need to dip into our savings. So, yeah, just looking for some tips on how to manage that better so that we don't need to dip into our savings as much as we are. Thanks. Have you ever done that, Amanda? Where you save and then you end up dipping into it. Absolutely. <laughs> this month. <laughs> this month. <laughs> Same as last month, Amanda. Yeah, yeah. Same as next month, Amanda. Yeah. Um, that's the point. And I'm not perfect either, right? But um, that's the point. The point here is, is that what you need to do, we did this with someone on the TV show a couple of, it was repeated a couple of weeks ago. Their episode was repeated a couple of weeks ago. We did someone on the TV show where they were trying to do that and they were really trying to get mm. on top of their day to day, but they kept getting these surprises. There's no yeah. such thing as a financial surprise, mm. right? Because, or that's not fair. There is a there is a financial surprise, but it should only surprise you once, right? Mm-hmm. So if you go on holidays every July, next July when you go on holidays, that's not a financial surprise. You've been going on holidays every July for the last 15 years. You're probably going to go next July as well. You're going to try to go anyway, right? So what I would say is it's about learning from the past. And yeah. what this person needs to do is, is at the start of each month, they need to give every single euro a job. Yeah. And they need to say, okay, where am I putting my money? Um, I have this to cover, I have this to cover, I have this to cover. And what the mistake people often make when they're giving every euro job, it's what I call spending rules, when they're creating their spending rules is they do it, they sit down at the start of the month and then it doesn't work 
or something changes or they get a financial surprise, for want of a better word. And then in the first of next month, they get paid again, they do it again without looking backwards. Mm. Right. So what you have to do is you have to make sure that you're taking the lessons of this month into next month so that when you're creating your spending rules next month, that you're better prepared. And the reality is, is there will be times where you may have to dip into savings, where you may have to do it. That's a buffer. That's where we're going to cover that off. Um, Mm -hmm. A buffer is really going to cover it. And I know we've talked about buffer already today. So what I would say is, is that buffer is really going to help this person. But learning from the trends of how their finances go on a month to month basis and applying the things that they've learned from the past into the future when they're creating the spending rules is the absolute key for this person. So would you say suggest even, I suppose, come to the end of this month now, re-evaluating and then maybe saving a more realistic amount? Yeah, it might be about saving a bit more realistic amount. You, you see, really what should happen, it depends on what phase in life you're at. Sometimes savings is the absolute priority and mm-hmm. everything else has to be sacrificed, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. But other times it's a case of, okay, I'm going to cover everything else off and then whatever I have left over, I'm going to save that at the start of the month, not at the end of the month. I'm going to save that at mm-hmm. the start of the month. And we're going to do a, a whole episode on saving. Um, yeah. So what, what I would say is, is that getting to grips with what's important to you at this time of your life. If you're saving for a particular goal, well, then it's going to mean sacrificing other parts of your life. If you're okay with your savings and you've started to build up some savings, well, then it's about making sure you've got everything covered and then seeing at the start of the month how much you're putting into savings this month. But the thing about it is, is trying to get a a guess, a best guess on what your month is going to look like financially yeah, yeah, yeah. between now and the next payday is the key to it. You need to, And you need to regularly do it throughout the month as well. How much money have I got left in my bank account? When am I next getting paid? And what's the important stuff I have to pay for between now and then? And do I have enough to cover it? Yeah. And if you do that two weeks out, you'll be able to say, okay, I actually don't have enough there and I'm going to have to borrow from Peter to pay Paul. So I, I'm going to have to pay less on the groceries um, in order to go out for that meal or I'm going to have to mm-hmm. not go out for that meal so I can pay more for the groceries. And I know they're very... Um, very kind of maybe people going. Oh, I have to go out for my meal, or I have to get, I have to pay for groceries. Yeah, they're they're very relative to people's importance. But my point here is, is that the more regular you're looking at this, the more the control you you're taking over yeah. it, and the less surprises you're going to have. Mm-hmm. We go for question three. Yep. Hi, my question's in relation to uh, the day-to-day finances. I went traveling for about six months and now we're home and we're trying to save for a mortgage. I'm trying to save about 50% of my wages towards the mortgage, but I'm just really struggling trying to manage other expenses. Um, I recently changed my pension to my employer contributing as well as myself and reduced my actual contribution to try and help with this deficit, but I'm just still really struggling, really waiting for a pay each week and trying to get loads from um, my partner which is just not helping I'm just really not sure what else I could do thank you she's kind of struggling there isn't she yeah and like she's doing like what kind of stands out is she's saving 50% which is massive I know she's saving for a house so you know you do need to you there's a lot of sacrifices that come when you're saving for a house the, the, the I suppose the biggest expense you're ever going to really mm. have. Um, but yeah, it's it's not a great situation to be in when day to day you don't have enough to keep you going. This is where the 35% rule comes in. So the mm-hmm. 35% rule, and this is something we have talked about quite a bit, the 35% rule basically says that you can afford to spend 35% of your take-home pay on your financial commitments. Okay. Okay. So take home pay, just to put those that in maths, imagine your take home pay in the month is a thousand euros a month. Mm-hmm. 35% of that is 350 quid. Mm-hmm. So you can afford to use 350 quid in that circumstance to pay for financial commitments. So that would be your car loan and your mortgage put together or any loans that you have and your, and your mortgage all put together. Or it could be your rent and your car loan and your personal loan all put together. Once it goes over 35%, it's not sustainable. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, you can do it for a short time. So 50% because you have a short-term goal that you're trying to achieve. Grand, you'll do it. But if you try and do that over a long period of time, you will blow up. And yeah. actually, the lower your salary is, the harder it is to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, there are people in Dublin and Limerick and Cork and Galway, right, who are paying 55 60% on rent. Yeah. And they've no choice. And this is where they're at. And that's just what they're being forced into. And Again, they might over the short term sustain that, but over the long term, what happens is they start hitting credit cards. Like she's talking about hitting her partner up for a loan yeah. from time to time, mm-hmm. right? 
she's lucky she can hit her partner for a loan other people would just reach for a credit card that's all they could mm. do and that's the way they have to put bread and milk on the table so that is not sustainable and it is sustainable potentially over a short period of time but if she's actually trying to save for a deposit for a house it's going like unless she's in an amazing position and she's got a huge salary it's going she's going to find that she's going to fall off the wagon so many times mm. that it's just going to feel like she's getting nowhere and ultimately yeah. what happens there is, is someone gets so fed up with the savings, then they go off on a splurge and they spend yeah. it all in one go. She needs to make it much more realistic and much more sustainable. Mm-hmm. And she needs to reduce how much she's saving on a month to month basis. Because if she doesn't, I don't believe she might get there, but it's just going to be a much harder journey than what, she's, what she could experience if she didn't yeah. um, to adjust it now. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that makes sense. And um I suppose then you don't really see any issue with her day to day. It's it, the more so you think that it's just no, because it's, I think, it's too I think big. She's of just saving a, too much of her yeah, money. Yeah, like she's, yeah. she's, 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 she's set herself out and you know what? I've just come back from travelling. Now I'm going to put my head down. I'm going to be really good and I'm going to save 50% of my wages. You have to live your life. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. That's, that's a really important thing that you are able to sustain this over a long period of time because if if like even it could even do more damage to her if she's trying to do it and she's not achieving it mm. I'm not saying definitely right but the bank is looking at her going this person thinks they can do more than they can actually do and it's just you can see it very evidently in their bank yeah. statements so just be careful about the pattern you're creating on your bank statements when the ultimate objective here is to be able to get a mortgage and to buy a house yeah okay yeah. Yeah. Amanda thanks for coming in today I know we were talking about some of your pains before you came in and we were talking about <laughs> the voice notes and the text messages. So for those of you who are on Instagram or who have engaged, these questions always come in to a WhatsApp. So yeah. what I would say is, is make li- Amanda's life easier. Amanda spends a lot of time during the week going through all the questions, trying to pick out the ones that we think and she thinks the audience are going to get the most out of. Yeah. You will have much more opportunity of your question being asked if you send it as a voice note. Absolutely, yeah. And yeah. it's really important that we try and, and we're getting loads of them. So trying to filter through them, get us the voice note in, get it get it over. And as always, that WhatsApp, it can be used for suggestions for guests, suggestions yeah, for topics, yeah. things you want to talk about, things you want to hear about. Or if you say, I'd love to go on that show and tell us my, tell my story. It's interesting, Amanda, when, when I talk to people like in the TV show or any of the guests we've had in here already who aren't professionals, but I would call real people, right? Mm. The real people we've had in the show. When you ask them, most of the people who you have in the show, you say to them, why did you come on? Whether it was the TV show or this, why did mm. you come on? And they say, I just think my story will help someone else. Yeah. And that that's the driver. Yeah, yeah. And that's why you do this. And that's why I do this. And yeah, that's why yeah. the team here is doing this. It's to try and help others. And if you want to be a guest on the show, don't worry about what the topic is. If you just think it's something interesting, or more importantly, if you think your story can help somebody else, I want to talk to you here. And um, get in touch with yeah. Amanda. We are we are listening because we even just our little meeting before here. I was talking about different ideas that were coming in and we're going to be doing podcast ideas on it. So always send your Idea is true. Yeah. Um, because we are listening. Even if we don't get to it immediately. We will come back to it. We, we're keeping we will it come back to it. What's the what's the WhatsApp number, Amanda? So it's 87 291 That's 87 291 Thanks, Amanda. See you next week. Thank you.